what's going on guys i'm back with another video but today this is actually going to be a different style of video i'm not going to be opening up any boxes uh i'm not in my normal normal uh setup for for card videos but i have decided that i'm going to clean out my collection now this is a complete and utter disaster on this desk but all of these cards i'm going to try and get rid of using ebay now i used to sell on ebay i stopped because it was just getting too much i try you know i was one of those guys trying to go to shows and stuff and, and try and flip cards but that kind of didn't really work for me just because of the cards that i'm into and that i know you know what i mean most of the card shows i go to didn't have you know hockey they didn't have stranger things they didn't have game of thrones and i i just couldn't do it anymore so i decided to stop but now i want to clean out my collection i want a fresh start I don't want to collect cards just to collect. As you can see, this is this is literally mo this is 98.2% of my collection. And then over here, which I'm going to do a different video on, this is the collection that I'm going to start with fresh again. But yeah, I mean I have I have a little bit of everything to be honest with you. I got numbered platinum that I've been opening, more platinum there, some Stranger Things base cards. There's Marvel that I just opened, a whole stack of young guns because I was decided I decided to go for the young guns at one point. There's a video on my channel about that. I'm not doing that anymore. That's just it's gonna be a pain in the ass. And then in here we got base Stranger Things sets. I got what else do I have? Here's some Stranger Things autos that I'm deciding to get rid of. I don't really think that I am going to collect them long term. I got Pokemon. I got Marvel Eternals. I got all of the all of the Spider-Man No Way Home inserts that I have. I even have some graded cards. Now I graded these ones myself way back when. So I mean, I, I'm just not I don't collect that stuff. I don't think it's cool. So I'm gonna try and sell those as well. I got some Disney Lorcana that I opened up on the channel that I just don't want anymore. I have a multiple stacks of opg all of the retros that i i just don't really collect and so what my plan is is i'm going to pretty much show you guys the process of selling on ebay especially if you guys are trying to get into it now i may not be the best just because what i'm selling is not what most people are selling but still i'm going to show you guys the process of uh, of what it takes to take pictures of all the cards, upload them on, on eBay and, you know, the process of, of selling a collection. Like I said, especially if you guys want to get into it, this kind of will give you some insight of maybe how long it takes for stuff to sell, you know, how much shipping is going to cost, stuff like that. So yeah. And then at the end of selling all these cards, what I plan on doing is pretty much investing that money into a camera. I've been filming on my phone and it's just, not good quality to be honest with you i mean i could see it you know the audio is not as good as it could be so you know maybe maybe this guys will give you some some motivation to clean out your collections as well to to get some extra money to maybe invest that into another part of your life like what i'm trying to do you know i think that it's a good investment long term you know getting a better camera getting better lighting i mean look at that you can't even see devonta smith you can't even see him because i have a literally have a lamp that's all i have that's all i have but yeah, so I guess I'm going to cut to me, uh, what was I going to say? I was going to cut to me, you know, uh, what the hell? I'm having a massive brain shit right now. I'm going to cut to me uploading stuff to eBay and showing you guys the process to that and, you know, kind of the strategies that I use to sell on eBay. So yeah, let's get into it. And this is pretty much me just doing a time lapse of listing up some auctions, you know, this is the process, honestly. You gotta lay out all the cards, make sure the buyer knows exactly what they're getting. You gotta take the pictures, upload them to the listing, name out the title, you know. Pretty much all these lots that you see me do in this time lapse it pretty much took me an hour and it wasn't even close to all the listings that I had to do. So, you know, just to keep in mind, if you're gonna start doing this with big lots, it takes a lot of time to get the pictures, uh, you know, making listings. So just keep that in mind. So, but yeah, this is pretty much the process of making a listing and then i'm going to show you right about now uh what it what you have to do to actually do the the titles all that all that shit with the specific listing so i searched up 
what I'm trying to sell and it pretty much asks you what kind of lot you're selling. You know, you're selling a, a sports card lot, a sports card single. Well, you gotta pick the right one that you're doing. I chose sports card lot, right? Now, you gotta upload the photos. This is pretty much if you've never done eBay listings before and you wanna know how it's how it works on how to make one. This is how you make it right here. So, upload the photos. I usually take them before I go into eBay, but as you can see in the bottom, in the bottom center, you could hit that plus sign and you could take pictures inside of eBay app. So just, just keep that in mind, honestly. And then for the title, you only have 80 characters. So you kind of have to label it correctly so that it reaches the right buyers. I'm not really good at making uh, titles, you know, look at me, I'm doing all caps. Uh, you know, it's not really the best title in the world, but you know, obviously if you're going to sell on eBay, you'll get better at over time. And also, if you are selling singles, what happens is most of the time you'll have, you'll search it up when looking for that listing and you'll see other people's listings that have sold and you can pretty much copyright and uh, what is it, plagiarism? You could plagiarize other people's listings, but in a legal way. So you, you can actually, you know, take everybody else's titles. You could take their, their descriptions. You can take, you can take all that if you have. If there's another card that sold on eBay that you're trying to sell, so also keep that in mind. So pretty much you don't have to do any of this stuff right here, if you just take whatever the other thing has. But I don't show you that here. But yeah, and then you get the title, you go into the the description, not the description. This is the item specifics, right? Make sure you put the right sport, the right season, the right year, the right manufacturer, and then if there is a set that you are selling here. What I, when I was selling, they, it literally wasn't in the system, so you pretty much have to type it in. But you know, all this helps, I think. I'm not really sure. I'm not big on you know the, the algorithm that eBay has. But yeah, put the set in for that specific lot that you're trying to sell. And then got that. Put in the league. In this case, I'm selling NHL cards, so it's going to be hockey, ice hockey. And then... I also really like to do number of cards just to make sure that the buyer knows exactly how many cards they're getting. And yeah, obviously if there's player specific players, you could put that in there as well, but I didn't. And then for pricing, you have two options. You can do buy it now or you could do auction. I usually do buy it now just because I, I don't really have time to, you know, auction. Auction's pretty much a gamble. I mean, it could go really low, could go really high, could go what you want, could go not what you want. So just keep that in mind. And then what am I doing here? I thought I put the, I guess I didn't put the description in, but yeah, usually put a description in on what you're selling here. I'm spamming all caps just to make sure that if the buyer wanted to look at the description, I usually don't look at descriptions, but you know, that's just me. I just let them know, see pics for, for specific cards you're getting you know make sure that if there are doubles in the lot let the buyer know but you obviously want to make that known in the pictures make sure that you could see both the cards obviously because you don't want to you know and then i usually put at the end pm with questions oboe or best offer just to make them comfortable to actually send in an offer and then for shipping you pretty much Put in the weight of the package and then the package dimensions. Obviously, you got to make sure it's right just so that the carrier has the correct measurements or, you know, correct weight so it goes in the right right zones of package or I don't know. But, yeah, make sure you put the right weight and that in there and that's it. So, yeah, that's how you list an item. And I also forgot to mention that with shipping, you have two options you could do or there might be three options, I'm not sure, but uh, the only two that I usually use is you could do the automatic shipping where it kind of calculates the cost of where it's going, what the label costs, how much track, you know, pretty much calculates that for you. Or what I do is I do a set cost. So here you can see that I did buyer pays $8 shipping instead of, you know, usually it'll give an amount to an amount. So see how it says crossed off there, five, seven, be two, nine dollars. I just do the flat rate of eight dollars because I'll know I usually usually figured out over time how much labels usually cost and how much your how much your shipping costs are with buying the package, the package and tape, the you know, if you use cardboard, rubber bait, you know, all that jazz. 
So you also have those two options as well. I forgot to say, but yeah, keep that in mind as well. And here is the first update. I am honestly recording this voice recording. I said recording twice there because I think I have a mental problem. But yeah, I, I'm doing this recording pretty much at the end after I sold all these lots. So I'm going to try and go off of what I remember. But this is pretty much, I believe, two days after I listed up. I started listing, so I ended up getting to 23 active and then eight sold, as you can see. But yeah, made $374. Doddle, dollars, I'm gonna say doddles. That's not a word, I don't think. But yeah, I was at $374. Now, that's not how much I put in, how much I got. As you can see, a little bit below it says your total funds. That that total fund amount, that's the what goes into the bank. So pretty much, what is the what does that account to? A hundred and two hundred and hundred and nineteen dollars i don't get so that's going towards the fees you know uh tracking the tracking labels i pretty much pay for that out of my funds so that gets subtracted automatically so yeah just 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 to be very clear when you are selling on ebay you, you if you sell an item for 25 dollars, you're not getting 25 dollars, and that's for damn sure you have to pay for fees if you get to a certain amount you're gonna have to start paying taxes and yeah so pretty much this is the first update after i started selling after i started listing and then all the way down below you can see that there's six offers so what happens is when you start listing up your auctions or not auctions your 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 buy it nows and this is why i like doing buy it nows because you can set a price but you can also allow the the the, the buyers to send in offers so you have more of a chance of it selling rather than you not having that option and they can't send an offer so if it's not a good price it's just not going to sell so yeah you can see i got six offers that i could send out and six more have or that's yeah i don't know what i was going to say there but yeah that's the first update and then i believe a couple days later my total was up to 527 dollars with an extra two what is that three sold and then my total went up what is that my total went up maybe close to so one, what is that, 150? I think it went up $150 a couple days later. Sold some more bigger cards. Got a bunch of stuff that I need to ship out now. There's 11 of them there. <laughs> and then see see how it says one with new offer? That's why, because you, you, can, you can evaluate the offer. And if you like it enough, you can just accept it. It's easy as that. Now, again, $527, not what I'm getting. $409, though, is what is going into my bank, which is honestly not bad for a couple days after starting to list stuff up. So pretty much at this point, or no, not at this point, the next one here at this point, I was up to $999 uh, with 23 auction, with 23 lots sold. Now, see what it says, the total funds is down to 78. So every certain amount of time after, after I don't know what the certain period of time is, but it'll transfer out from eBay into your bank and then you won't have it in here anymore for your total funds. It'll just be in your bank. So you don't have to worry about that anymore. But yeah, at this point, I believe I was up to few what is that maybe i don't know seven seven fifty so at this point my goal has been accomplished i wanted to get a camera wanted to get new lighting i'll pretty much be able to go and get out that get all that after you know at this point and yeah i mean here pretty much at my goals which is amazing to be honest with you so and then the next update here this is massive. I was up to $1,477 total sales. Not what's going in my bank again. Now, I was up to 34 auctions sold, which is actually pretty good, honestly. At this point, I was pretty much over halfway through all the cards that I needed to sell. Here, have another $243 going in the bank at some point in the near future. But in this case, it's not the near future. It's the near past because I'm recording this voice after this happened so yeah also had two two items to ship out four waiting for payment so yeah very very clear at this point hit my goal and pretty much at the end was up to sixteen hundred and sixty eight dollars in total sales this is pretty much what i ended with here i believe i was yeah this is pretty much what i ended with 
honestly. But and then I have another update after this one, but I'll explain what happened thereafter. But yeah, ended up with 38 lots sold, 24 active left. I took all the 24 active down. I have a plan for all those lots after at some point. I don't know what I I don't know if that video is gonna come out before this or after this, but I have a plan for that. And yeah, I mean I thought this was this was a just for clarification, this was a two week period. So I pretty much made over a thousand dollars, maybe close to I don't know, let's just say in the twelve hundred to thirteen hundred dollar range. So let's just say take out let's be let's be safe. Say I made twelve hundred dollars in about two weeks, right? Take out four hundred and sixty eight dollars for taxes, fees, shipping costs, stuff like that, which is actually pretty pretty fair, honestly. So yeah, I mean it wasn't wasn't easy. But a lot of the a lot of the cards that I ended up selling were sent in through offers, which is how I sold most of my lots. So definitely recommend having that option for the buyer if you are selling on eBay, because like I said, it just gives more opportunity to sell the lots. So yeah, and finally, this was total. I ended up selling forty lots, zero, zero active, zero unsold. Like I said, I took everything down. I think it was sixteen seventy five here. Now. For some, literally, I swear to God, I sold 40, 40 lots of cards. And I shit you not, one lot ended up getting lost for a couple days. And the buyer ended up putting in a, a notice to eBay just to make sure that if it was lost, they knew. But it ended up getting, they ended up getting found and then it made it to the buyer, which got delivered, which is huge. So... Yeah, had that, and then when they when they do put in a notice that the package may be lost, they'll hold the funds, so you'll kind of lose some money, but then if it gets delivered, you kind of gain that back, so just be careful. Packages may get lost, which is another thing that I hate about selling on eBay, is that I've had many packages get lost or 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 damaged, or just, you don't, I don't even know where they are, you know what I mean? They could be in Antarctica floating in, in an iceberg, you know, who knows, to be honest with you, who knows, but yeah, this is the end. Hope you guys enjoyed. I am very excited to finally go get that camera, increase the quality of my videos, and hope that we just keep growing from here on out. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned to the next video. Actually, I wanted to make one more comment. I hope that this video kind of helped in some way, shape, or form. If you are going to start selling on eBay, maybe you could take something from this video. Who knows? But Honestly, I'm probably not what most eBay sellers are going to be selling when it comes to sports cards. I didn't sell any football, baseball, basketball. I literally sold hockey and then non-sports cards. So take this total with a grain of salt. I'm sure you can make a crap ton more money selling football, rookies, basketball. I'm, you know what I mean? There's a lot more money in those types of cards. So obviously my total is not going to be as high as others, but yeah. I just wanted to say that I hope you guys, if you are selling eBay, I wish you the best. It's not easy. It definitely isn't easy, especially for people like me who don't like cards sitting around. I think I said it in this video at one point, but yeah, it takes time selling cards. You're not going to sell them overnight. You know, you may have cards sitting for months at a time, so just be prepared for that. But yeah, now that's the end of this video. Bye.